Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. It's time to review Mangrove, the first film in Steve McQueen's Small Axe Anthology, the second one that premiered at New York Film Festival. This one is a full-ass movie. It's a little over two hours long. The film's about the owner of a restaurant named The Mangrove, which opened in West London in 1968 and became a sort of staple of the black community in that area. The restaurant was relentlessly raided by police because of racism. The community started a protest that went from the mangrove to the police station, and then nine of them were put on trial. A huge chunk of the film is about how the trial ensued and whether the police were eventually held accountable for their actions. It's interesting that this film is kind of like the trial of Chicago 7 in some ways, and I feel like the courtroom drama is not a typical genre for Steve McQueen, who really thrives in dialogueless drama and creating scenes that really like pack a gut punch, you will absolutely find scenes like that in the beginning. What's amazing in these scenes is the way that the black community fights back with the police and like the fury that they all have and the passion that drives them. It's really something amazing to see that really carries over from Lover's Rock, which is actually the second film, I think. but. It has that same kind of energy. And then the last half, or maybe more, is about the actual courtroom process. And so it really kind of shifts in that way, and it becomes very dialogue-driven. In a lot of ways, this is like Steve McQueen's most straightforward movie. It follows a pretty clear like series of events, and he doesn't usually do anything that throws off the audience. Compared to Lover's Rock, which we just watched in part of this anthology, it is not as stylistically daring. But, you know, in return, we have something that, you know, in its straightforwardness is a little more emotionally charged. It's more accessible. Like and it tells, emotion. like, a great story. Yeah. All the shots are still amazing looking in this movie. It's really brought alive by, like, the energy of his direction especially the ensemble in this film. Perhaps the best thing in the movie is just how good everybody is. The lead in this film, Sean Parks, the owner of the business, is ferociously good. It becomes more of an ensemble piece as the film goes on, but for the beginning, he's remarkable. From where I'm standing, he deserves an Oscar nomination. Even though this film is not eligible for Oscar because it's not being released as a film, he's that good. Every time the camera's on him, it's like intensity. It kind of does stray away from him a little bit, but there are a couple moments where it comes back and it comes back really hard on him. He's, he's amazing. And the other performer who I think like just totally knocked it out of the park was Letitia Wright, who we know from Black Panther. I saw a caliber of acting from her that we didn't see in Black Panther here. She is phenomenal. It was like an Oscar moment, all right? And again, we, we can't keep talking about Oscars because this is not eligible, but if it were eligible, she would be getting nominated for absolutely. We also have Malachi Kirby, who is a standout, particularly in the second half during some of the court scenes, who kind of takes on like this role representing himself in the courtroom. And a lot of these people actually did represent themselves and they had to really like prepare. They stood up to the judge in the courtroom thinking, you know, my, my life is on the line. Like this, this judge and the people in this room have the ability to decide my fate, but I'm going to be the example of what I want to see in the world. And I think that's sort of the thesis of the film. At some point, enough is enough and you can no longer just retreat to the comforts of, you know, having a simple life. Even though this is mostly an inspiring story, it's just the story of like somebody being harassed like over and over and over again. And it, it makes it quite sad. Like there, there are some vi victory moments in this, but you know, in context, what it's really about is just somebody who wasn't able to like actually just run their business, be left alone. It's also about like the institution of the court system and the police who are actively trying to knock these people down. And it's kind of amazing how the characters are going on trial in a court system that is completely biased against them. And even in those moments where you feel the triumph, it never takes away from the fact that you know that they're fighting against a system where it's like absolutely insane to even think that they could win. People were charged for inciting violence against the police when in fact the police were originating the violence. So we definitely can contextualize it within today. It's also about a judge claiming to be impartial in a very like what we would say is colorblind way, pretending that race doesn't matter. 
when in fact like it's 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 hilarious because there's some lines in this where like the script is just brilliant it's like what are you talking about like this this has everything to do with race like the reason they're getting these warrants to come and like raid their restaurant is because of their race so you can't have like a race blind trial Trial of Chicago 7, the same exact thing. I mean, both of these movies are sort of exposing why we should have and continue to have a distrust for authority and for the agencies that are supposed to protect us and do justice. The idea that there there could be such a system that's unbiased, it kind of like puts that notion to bed. Both of those films really challenge that in the same exact way. And, and not in a way where it's like, you can just dismiss it as like, oh, this happened in the past, but it's cool that we're now all good. Because um, even though there are triumphs within the system, it's not a movie about how, well, you just got to have faith in that good old justice system. Like, it's not that yeah. either. It's a really important film about something that most people in the U.S. probably have not heard of. But it was a really important moment in British history because it was like the first time that authorities were kind of proven to be biased in this way. I think this is a great hero story. And it, it, sh it should be exactly that. It definitely has its share of like incredible Steve McQueen moments. Mm -hmm. There are times where it being like the most straightforward Steve McQueen film does make it, in my opinion, a little less impactful than his other films as a whole, even though it has those moments. It's not necessarily a movie where I'll be thinking about like the characters after. Yeah, I don't know that it has like that much to linger on, but it is first and foremost a powerful, true story that deserves to be told. And Steve McQueen does it a lot of justice. I think he elevates it to a higher level than most filmmakers would. Once again, small acts. We're two for five. This feels like it's shaping up to be a phenomenal series. Did we like it better than Lover's Rock? It was obviously extraordinarily different. I mean, this one has the full like structure of a movie. Lover's Rock, I actually liked a little bit better just because like the filmmaking was so mesmerizing in that film. But this film is probably like the one that more people should see and is more important. I do like Lover's Rock slightly more just because I think that stylistically it's more memorable. We are of course gonna see some Emmys. Steve McQueen, Emmy winner. Yeah, some great performances in this in this film. Definitely worth checking out. Meaty Steve McQueen fucking filmmaking right here. I'd give Mangrove a nine out of 10. I would give Mangrove an eight out of 10. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Do you have faith in the justice system?